If you know me, then you know I'm obsessed with performance. It's a huge reason why I picked Generate Press and Generate Blocks in the first place, and probably for some of the same reasons you did too. But just because out of the box everything already comes so performant as it is, doesn't mean we shouldn't take a few extra steps to really tidy things up and make them as quick as possible. In this video, I'm going to share three different ways you can do that and make your websites faster than ever. So if you're looking to speed things up, then you're in the right place. Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. Both Generate Press and Generate Blocks give you the option to print your CSS inline or through an external file. And while you might think that inline would be the better way to go, there are actually significant performance benefits to using the external file. To do this is really simple. It's just a couple of drop down boxes. For Generate Press, we'll go to Appearance, Customize, under General, we'll just make sure this first drop down menu is set to External File. Now, I do believe this comes by default on external file, but if you've played around with these settings, you might've got them mixed up. So once you have that done, you can always hit this regenerate CSS file. If anything goes wonky, that will reset everything, but you should be good to go. I found this very reliable. For generate blocks, we'll just go here under generate blocks, settings, and here under CSS print method, we'll just make sure this is also set to external file. And we have the same option here for regenerating CSS files. We can hit save and we're good to go on both of those settings. Images tend to be one of the biggest problems when it comes to getting the best performance out of your website. And this is especially true when we do full width images inside hero sections on websites. Those 1920 pixels you've saved to make this look great on desktop really go to waste when you size things down to a mobile device. But a lot of times we're just leaving in that big image there and letting that show on mobile too. But did you know inside of Generate Blocks, you can actually change the background based on the device. It's all already built in, but it is an advanced setting you have to look for. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this, because in my testing, I was able to save 90 or 95% on the size of my images for mobile. As you can see here, I have a pretty typical setup for a hero section. We have a full width image that spans the entire width of the browser. Now I've gone ahead and saved this image to 1920 pixels wide, but when we get down to tablet and mobile breakpoints, those things are never gonna be that wide. So using an image that's set up that wide is a lot of wasted pixels. This is set up using a typical method of just going here, selecting our container, and under backgrounds, choosing the background image. But again, this is loading that same image for all the breakpoints. So what I'm gonna suggest is that you actually delete that out and we use this advanced method instead. So here I'm gonna tick on the advanced toggle and I'm gonna hit the wrench icon. We'll go ahead and hit add background for the type we'll choose image now here we're just going to load in the desktop image first so we'll change the device to desktop here under browse we can grab this desktop size version i have which is 1920 pixels wide coming in at 137 kilobytes go ahead and select that and we'll close out this panel and you can see our background image is back to where it's supposed to be of course because we just set this to desktop there's nothing there for tablet and nothing for mobile. So we need to go ahead and fix that. We'll select this container again, click the wrench icon and hit add background. Again, we'll choose image. For this one, we'll choose tablet. We'll go to browse and I'll choose the tablet version, which I've saved down to 1024 pixels wide. And it's already gone down to 70 kilobytes. Go ahead and select that and add background one more time. We'll choose image. We'll choose mobile and we'll select the mobile version of this image. This is saved down to 768 pixels, which is the breakpoint for mobile in Generate Press. And you can see the file size is down to just 25 kilobytes. Coming from our desktop version that was 137, that's a pretty significant savings. You're definitely going to see that come up in the scores. So go ahead and hit close here. And now as we cycle through these, we have the background image for each one of them. Of course, you can't really tell from here that we're using a different image. So I'm just gonna go in here and change the mobile device to a completely different image. We'll close this panel out. And now as we cycle through, we see we have a completely separate image for mobile. This actually comes in really handy as well because often background images are too distracting on mobile and I'll go with something more simple. If you use this advanced method, then you can control what image shows based on the breakpoint. Funny enough, we're all chasing Google's performance metrics to make sure our websites are up to speed. But as soon as you start using Google fonts, well, those performance scores go in the trash. 
So in this next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually load all your fonts locally. Personally, I do this with a plugin called Perf Matters, but you don't have to add a plugin to your website in order to load the Google fonts locally from your own server. I've seen this shave off entire seconds off of website loads and gain 10 points or more on PageSpeed Insight scores. So let's take a look at how it's done. In order to load the fonts locally, we're actually gonna follow this documentation provided by Generate Press. Now you can go through all this step by step, but I found that it's a little bit overkill and there's a pretty simple way to get all this working. So the first thing we need to do is to hop into our site and go to the customizer so we can take inventory of what fonts we're using. On this demo site, I'm just using the font Roboto and by default, it's doing this by using the Google Fonts API. So every time this website is loaded, it's making a call out to Google to supply the font. So knowing that and knowing that I'm using the 400 weight, the 500 weight and the 700 weight, we've taken inventory of what fonts we'll need to download in order to load them locally. So here in the Generate Press documentation, this first link here will open this Google Web Fonts helper tool. Up in the top left corner, we'll just search for the font we need and click on it. From here, we can select the weights we need, which was the regular 400, the 500, and the 700. We can scroll down here to this download button and go ahead and download those fonts to our computer. Of course, WordPress isn't gonna allow you to upload font files to the media library. So we need to go back here to this documentation from Generate Press, scroll down and grab just this little bit of code here. By adding this, we'll be able to upload our fonts directly to our media library. To add this snippet of code, you can either use a plugin like Code Snippets, or if you're using a child theme like I am, you can go to Appearance, Theme File Editor, choose your functions.php file, and paste that little bit of code in. We can go ahead and update this file, and now we'll be able to upload these fonts directly to our media library. Here we'll go to Media, Add New, we'll select Files, and I've unzipped all of those fonts that we downloaded just a moment ago. We'll go ahead and open those so it will load them all in. And now we need to copy the URL of one of these fonts to our clipboard. It doesn't matter which one, we just need the path of where all these fonts are saved. From there, we'll jump back into this Google Web Fonts helper, scroll down, and here under Customize Folder Prefix, we'll delete out what's already in there and paste in the URL we just copied. Now this does have the exact font we copied, so we can just use the arrow keys to go back to when we find that last forward slash, and we can delete everything to the right of it. Now this way, it's gone ahead and prefixed the full URL of where all these fonts are located on our server, and then added the font names we'll need. So now with all that in here, we can just go ahead and copy that, go back into our website, and either in our child theme or inside the customizer, we can add the CSS. This time I'll just do it inside the additional CSS in the customizer and we'll paste that in. Now we have just one more step to make sure that these are loading locally. We'll go back one level and go into typography. Here under Roboto, I just wanna uncheck this Use Google Fonts API. Now you can see nothing changed on the site and that's because I've already brought in all of these fonts. If you, for whatever reason, made a mistake during the process, you might see something like Times New Roman loading on your website and you know that you have a problem. Now you might have more than one font family inside of here, so you'll need to repeat this process for each one of the font families on your website. Hopefully you learned a trick or two inside this video that will help speed up your website. I know that if you're using Generate Press and Generate Blocks that performance must be important to you. So it's important enough to take these couple extra steps in order to make things that much better. If you enjoy content like this, you can click one of these videos popping up in the corner where I cover some more Generate Press and Generate Blocks content. And don't forget, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can see the next videos as they come out.